You're listening to Garden Master Ken Lane and the Top 10 Gardener Podcast. Welcome to the Top 10 Garden Show. All right, so we are back with Lisa Waters Lane in the studio. She comes each week with your garden questions. Just what are your neighbors talking about? And uh, so we can get some insight into that. So welcome to the studio, uh, Lisa. Thank you. Always good to be here. Really? No. Um, yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it actually is hard to come up with content 52 weeks out of the year. I, I talk to other business owners or, or uh, hosts or podcasters or, or con content creators. Mm -hmm. And uh, they go, oh, that's a great idea. I just want to do that. I also want to write a book and I want to start my own. Uh, yeah, it sounds really good. <laughs> until you have to actually do it every week, coming up with original, entertaining, mm -hmm. insightful, uh, knowledgeable mm -hmm. type of content. And so it gardening is, is actually easier than ever. I mean, I can't imagine doing insurance, <laughs> attorneys, accountants. Actuaries. You know, actuaries, yeah. <laughs> anyway, so this is Garden Questions. Mm -hmm. So what do we got? Anything interesting going on with the well, monsoon rains? Well, sure, they're always interesting, right? Right? <laughs> yeah. Well, sometimes they're more interesting well, than we do. others. Since we've had that moisture, we have a lot of weird weeds and vines and things yeah. growing that we probably didn't have last year because they just kind of sat dormant in the ground because there wasn't enough moisture to get yeah. them going. But this year we have stuff going. So the weeds are coming out in full force. That's for sure. But Marty has a weed growing in her yard that looks very similar to Morning Glory. But okay. a little bit smaller. She wants to know, can I just let it grow? It looks kind of pretty. <laughs> yeah. Or is it something I should take care of? Yeah, you should take care of that. So so it is a morning glory. We call it wild morning glory, I'm guessing. Now, there is actual morning glory. It grows mm -hmm. here. Now, we're not allowed to sell the seed because uh, if cattle eat morning glory, they stop eating. They stop gaining weight. Ranchers just outlawed morning glory, selling morning glory seed here in the state of Arizona 100 years ago. So, but you can still find it from a friend. <laughs> There's still ways to find it. So there's always a black that's market. That's one with a great big blue flower, purple flower. Right. And so there's a cousin to that called Wild Morning Glory that is much more aggressive. Mm -hmm. And it climbs up. It's also called choke weed. Yeah. It chokes out corn, chokes out your, your vegetables, chokes out your flowers, chokes out if you stand still long enough, it'll choke you out. So you really don't want this in your yard. And it's an annual. It comes back by seed mm -hmm. every year. And so it's the rains are kind of what started. So I'm sure we have seen a little bit showing up here, but it'll climb up fences, mm -hmm. form a seed, and then spew it all over the yard. And so it's very insidious. So you really don't want this in your yard. So mm -hmm. kill it. Pull Is it, it out. also known as bindweed? Bindweed. Is that another name? Yep. That's it. Yeah. Usually it's like a little pink or white flower on it. Yeah. Comes in a couple different colors, mm -hmm. but uh, none of it is good. Okay. Don't let it grow. Uh, decimate is a really easy uh, uh, type of weed killer. It's it's a, a liquid. Mm -hmm. Mix up in a, in a pump up spray can, spot treat that, and it'll be dead by the end of the day, basically. Mm -hmm. It's really fast. Keep up on it. You know, something uh, you mentioned that last year didn't have rain drought. We didn't have as many weeds. Mm -hmm. uh, and then this year we do. Uh, I, I saw a study that said there's like 2,000 seed in every square foot of <laughs> soil wild. you see sitting there waiting to be disturbed or right. moistured. They're laying, laying in wait. Mm -hmm. There was an unbelievable number. Wow. Yeah. How, how is that even possible? But then you see the rains come and you see why it's possible. Mm -hmm. That's a good uh, reason to use the weed and grass stopper that it's a preventative or oh, yeah. pre-emergent, uh, it is hugely useful if you don't want to be out there pulling a ton of weeds all the time. Again, bindweed or, or wild morning glory, that is a an annual. It mm -hmm. only comes back by seed every year, right. never by the roots. So if you can put that out where that weed and grass stopper out where they seem to come up along the driveway mm -hmm. next to that fence line, you can eliminate any of the work, eliminate having to spray weed killers because you took care of it before be they even came pulling, up. You bet. Good advice. All right. Our next question is from Chan Shannon and Chino. Uh, she wants to put in raspberries, blackberries, marion berries, all the berries. Wants to know uh, what kind of light do they need? Do they need to be on a trellis or can you just kind of let them free form? Yeah, good. So, um, so Shannon, Chino Valley is they've got some very nice vineyards out there. So grapes, 
uh, brambles, blackberries, raspberries do amazingly well. The secret with berries, they need sunlight. Mm -hmm. And so Chino's pretty good with the sunlight. I would say at least six hours or more of sunlight will get you a nice big cluster of berries. Um, we're starting to harvest those right now. So mm -hmm. this is when you, so from, from summer through autumn is when you pick most of the berries mm -hmm. and it's a great time to plant some sure. for next year's harvest. So yes, you can definitely have that. Uh, I would say one little insider tip when you're planting berries, it's one, mm -hmm. come talk to us and we can show you how to plant them. But with berries, they're very sensitive to having soil on their canes or on mm -hmm. their their stems. Mm -hmm. Don't let any soil touch that when you're planting them or they will crown rot or stem rot uh, in the garden. So they can come back from the roots. But hey, why do that? Right. You have this beautiful plant you bought from the nursery, you want it to live and thrive and grow. Mm -hmm. uh, and then trellis or not to trellis, fence or not to fence. Brambles seem to find their own way. They just grow and have big stems. If you want to keep them in bounds, mm -hmm. so keep tie them next to a fence or tie them up to a trellis. It'll keep them from being uh, you know eight by eight by eight okay. sprawling plant. It'll be two by eight by eight uh, sprawling plant against it the fence. Makes line it easier to pick to the manage. Fruit as yeah. well. Yeah. yeah. There's also uh, just insider tips. That's one when you come look, we can guide you through this, but there's thornless varieties. Mm -hmm. So you don't look like you've been in a cat fight <laughs> when you go to pick the berries. It's just, yeah. there are certain varieties that do better here. So of course okay. that you'll find those at Waters, Waters Garden Center, Center, of course. <laughs> Gotta get and you can check in. them on the website. So okay. top10plants.com. Sure. You can see what's on. Okay. Good information. Uh, next is Laurel in Prescott Valley. She wants to know, is it okay at this time of year to trim up some of her shrubs? So roses, crepe myrtle, yeah. butterfly bush. Um, is it okay to trim those this time of year? Yeah, absolutely. Especially the spring bloomers. So for Scythia, lilacs, flowering quince, azaleas, rhododendrons, prune those things back now. And they'll start forming their buds through autumn, through the winter, and they'll bloom next spring. Mm -hmm. Things like butterfly bush, rows of Sharon's, crepe myrtles, the things that bloom in the summer, chaste tree. There's a ton of them. Uh, mm. uh, desert willow. There's a ton of them. Right. Uh, those, you're better off right now deadheading the spent flowers. Focus on the flowers. Pitch mm -hmm. the flowers off, and they'll repeat bloom. Okay. And then this winter, let's say November, December, January, uh, when it's definitely they've gone dormant, that's the best time to plant or to prune those back. Okay. Right now, if you prune them back too much, you can affect their flowers. They won't bloom anymore. And we're in the peak of the bloom cycle. So right. why not enjoy the flowers yeah. instead of trying to focus on the, the, the size of the plant? Mm -hmm. What the book says is you can prune back 10% of the foliage mass whenever you want. Middle of summer is 100 degrees. Prune it back. Right. Uh, the heavy pruning on summer blooming things are done in the winter. So you can prune up to a third of that foliage, a third of the plant, just whack it right back down uh, in winter. The spring bloomers, you're you're really pruning a third of the foliage mass, really cut it back. Let's see a lilacs, it's really gone berserk, too big. You can prune it back now. So okay. really May, June is ideal, but hey, it's July, go for it. Okay. I think we got time to sneak one more in. So David had a beautiful maple that was slammed by all the hail. Oh, no. Um, to the oh. point that it even took bark off the branches and stems. Wants to know, yeah, that's hard. boy, is it going to make it with that kind of, you know, damage to it? Yeah. And, and then just what things should he be looking out for? So what you do, so so the hail really took out portions. And we're seeing pockets of hail all around the county, really. Mm -hmm. And we're not done. So we've got <laughs> hail possible through September. Yeah. So things will relief. They will regrow. They'll actually grow more cambular, more bark area around those damaged areas. Will it live? Will it die? I don't know. I'm not uh, all omnipotent. I'm not sure. But I know I'm always stunned at how plants want to live. Mm -hmm. They want to come back. They want to grow. Just nurse them along at all and they'll come out of it. Yeah. So the best thing now is fertilize with the all purpose plant food right now. Like take advantage of the, we got three months of growing season left. Take advantage of every day mm -hmm. and it'll form new leaves. You probably have great fall color this fall and that bark area, it'll actually start to grow over. It might take a couple seasons but it'll grow over and heal itself. Right. I would give it a chance. Don't give up. If it does die, I know where you can buy a beautiful <laughs> new maple tree here in Prescott. So if it, but give it a chance first. Yeah. 
Okay, out of time. Kenna Lisa Lane, the Mountain Gardeners. We'll be right back after this. Waters Garden Companion Plants for July are hibiscus, maple, verbena, and crepe myrtle. Crepe myrtle flowers are intense watermelon pink, solar reds, and LED whites that cover this heat-loving shrub. Plant where you enjoy its beautiful multicolored bark and sinuous branches up close. The flowers show against forest green foliage that turns red and orange in autumn. Growing to just head height, every yard has room for at least one and only available for summer planting here at Waters Garden Center in Prescott. You're listening to Ken Lane, a.k.a. the Top 10 Gardener. Ken can be found throughout the week in Prescott at Waters Family Garden Center. Listen daily as he answers the Top 10 Questions of the Week. Streaming on Apple, Google, Spotify, or wherever you download your podcasts. 